Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. On the last video, we talked about dairy. Today, we're going to talk about gluten, and let's get right into it. Gluten is a protein found in wheat, barley, and rye. The most common condition that people know about is celiac or celiac disease. This is an autoimmune condition, and when you consume gluten, you have damage to the small intestine. Basically, you're going to have an immune response to gliadin and tissue transglutaminase. This is what they check on your blood work. So they, if you have antibodies or immunoglobulins to gliadin and transglutaminase, they can basically diagnose you with uh, celiac disease. Now, what it does is it damages the villus of the small intestine. The villuses are basically the lows and highs of the small intestine and basically it blunts it, it shortens that, and decreases the surface area of the small intestine, leading to malnutrition, malabsorption, and chronic uh, issues. So basically it can lead to anemia, fatigue, obviously digestive issues, and so forth. Non-celiac gluten sensitivity is not an autoimmune condition, but these patients tend to have similar symptoms maybe not as severe. So it can stimulate the, what we call the innate immune system of our body and causes inflammation, bloating, joint pain, and even brain fog. So if you have gluten exposure and all of a sudden you feel a little bit foggy or your concentration is not as good, then you may actually have an issue with gluten. Intestinal permeability or leaky gut. So when you eat gluten, it can actually damage uh, other parts of the intestine. So gliadin triggers the release of zonulin, okay, a protein that regulates the tight junctions of the gut. So the tight junctions are between what we call enterocytes and things that should not cross is blocked. So this tight junction prevents larger proteins and larger chains of carbohydrates from crossing into the bloodstream and having a immune response. So if you have gluten sensitivity or non-celiac gluten sensitivity, or even celiac obviously, it creates leaky gut or intestinal permeability. I'd like to make a quick announcement. We are running a 14-day anti-inflammatory challenge on our membership site called Holistic Health Champions. The challenge will start on December 2nd. It's not enough to know all the information. It's important to have the proper guidance, accountability, and for us to guide you through the steps. Now, if you're interested, we are providing a, a discount of $29 per month for our membership site. It's the lowest it's ever been. We're gonna run this promotion until December 1st, and the challenge will start on December 2nd. If you're interested, please sign up on the link below. In addition, you can have what we call allergies. So you can have a IgE response to gluten. Basically, you can have a wheat allergy, okay? It's an IgE-mediated response, and it releases histamine, and it can create uh, a release of inflammatory cytokines. Infl inflammatory cytokines can be th things like interleukin, uh, tumor necrosis factor, etc. It can create hives, breathing issues, asthma, right? <clears throat> Itchy or itchiness. Gluten impacts the gut microbiome also. It reduces what we call beneficial bacteria in our gut, thereby increasing, quote unquote, bad bacteria to overgrow. And then that leads to leaky gut syndrome as well as low-grade inflammation. So when you start to have low-grade inflammation, you're gonna have symptoms like joint pain, skin issues, brain fog, just not feeling well overall, okay? Activation of the innate immune system. You're gonna have a mild generalized immune response because you had gluten exposure. Proteins like amylase tryptan inhibitors found in gluten so this is found in gluten and inhibits enzymes in our, in our system. 
Amylase is what breaks down uh, carbohydrates, and trypsin is what breaks down protein to its amino acid sequences. Now, if you have this immune response, right, because of amylase trypsin inhibitors from gluten, it's gonna trigger macrophages or macrophages, okay? Now, here's the kicker. A lot of the wheat protein or gluten-containing protein looks very similar to other grains, even though they're gluten-free. So you can have a gluten-free diet and you can still have immune reactions as a result. So when a patient comes in and they have celiac disease, okay, and they're on a gluten-free diet eating only gluten-free grains, yet they still don't feel well. It's likely because of this cross-reaction between gluten, or basically wheat, and gluten-free grains because of the large portions of amino acid sequences of the, of the wheat and gluten-free grain look very similar and your immune system gets confused. So whenever you have a celiac patient, it's almost always better to be on a complete grain-free diet rather than just a gluten-free diet for these individuals. All right, my name is Dr. Jin Sung. We're at Clinical Excellence, meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on The Healthy Side. Have an awesome day.